Hey guys, and welcome to LeeCraft 101, Episode 3, Lane Control. In Episodes 1 and 2, I talked about the timing and execution of the trading stance and retaliation trade. However, to be a good laner, it's essential to understand lane control, how to get it, and some elementary wave manipulation. This episode will teach you how to attain lane control and turn it into a game-winning mid-game advantage. If you can master these three episodes, you'll have the knowledge to take your raw laning skill to high diamond level. Now lane control put simply is when your opponent is unable to freely move forwards to get CS. Getting lane control has two distinct phases. The first of these is the trade and push phase. The trade and push phase in one sentence is simple. Get favourable trades while pushing the lane. Pushing the lane is extremely important because you reach level spikes first, such as the level 2 all in, and your trades are enhanced with minion damage. Executing it however is a completely different matter. In the trade and push phase, your default behaviour is to auto attack minions. While auto attacking minions, you should also be looking for trading stance opportunities and positioning yourself in between attacks to use spells to simultaneously push the lane and harass. Let's look at an example of the trade and push phase by Nick, a challenger ADC. In this clip you can see both of us using every auto attack to get the wave pushing in our favour, while simultaneously trying to line up Q to hit both the enemy and the minions. We continue trading blows and try to get the wave pushing to get the level 2 power spike. At this point, I make a crucial error and go for a minion while Nick is in the trading stance, and he gets an attack off on me. He's now one attack up, so he continues to trade with me while I try to retreat. He then knows I'll retreat towards my turret, so he moves to the right to land his Q on both me and the minions, thus pushing the lane. After the Q hits, I've no way to respond and have to relinquish lane control to Nick. At the point where you've established lane control, and they're unable to freely move forwards to get CS, you should immediately stop pushing. You have three main options after attaining this lane control. Your goal after attaining it is to choose the best option that will deny the most gold and experience from your opponent. These three main options are zoning, slow push, and freezing. Zoning is an extremely brutal strategy that completely denies the enemy of farm and experience. It's accomplished by standing between the enemy and the creep wave after achieving lane control. As soon as you start to zone, you're going to become the enemy jungler's immediate priority, and you can use this to your advantage by either wasting their time with wards, or setting up a counter gank, or even having your team make a play on the other side of the map. If you're facing champions that have amazing flash engage, such as Annie, Thresh, or Alistar, you have to employ a different punishment strategy, because flash initiation into jungle gank will kill you, even if you're well warded. Now zoning isn't difficult mechanically, but making the correct decision to zone is. In this clip, I'm able to zone the Karthus completely off the creep wave, and take a risk that the Master Yi isn't going to come around and flank me. Notice that if I was facing a jungler such as Gragas or Jarvan, I'd be much more hesitant to zone the Karthus this far away from my turret, as their ganks are far stronger than a pre-6 Master Yi. The Karthus can't help but miss two and a half waves of minions, since he's subject to this zoning pressure. When it's too dangerous to zone an enemy out of the minion wave, or the enemy jungler is strong, you want to slow push. Slow pushing is only last hitting minions and otherwise not using auto attacks. This allows the wave to push towards the enemy at the slowest rate possible while getting the maximum farm. While slow pushing you want to be using the trading stance as much as possible in order to whittle down the enemy for a dive or to make them too low to contest a dragon. Let's look at an example of slow pushing. In this clip we've established lane control. By slow pushing and threatening trading stance on low health minions, we can deny gold and experience to the Jinx and whittle her down. If you note that you're whittling down your opponent and you're slow pushing, you want to call your jungler to the side of the map to convert the pressure into a dive or a dragon. As you get closer and closer to tower range though, you need to become much more restrained with your trades and respect what your opponent can do. In this clip we've already attained a CS lead, and needlessly throw away all our lane pressure by getting flash pulverized and headbutted into the turret. By not putting myself in this position, we could have extended the lead by another 6 minions when Jinx is forced to back, and come back to lane with a healthy advantage. Instead, we blow all our summoners and almost throw the game. If the enemy is not easily punished with the trading stance, and you won't be able to whittle them down, such as Caitlyn or Jinx, freezing the lane may be the best option. Let's look at the freezing process in action. 
The first step of the freezing process is to drive a large slow pushed wave into the enemy turret and reset it by having the turret kill off the minions. Incoming enemy minions will arrive before yours, creating a larger wave on their side. This large wave will start to push back towards your side, thus eliminating your smaller incoming wave. At this point you can tank the incoming creep wave and freeze it outside your turret. We then thin out the wave to make it a more manageable size, but still larger than ours, and immediately stop attacking the minions and zone the enemy out. We get three main benefits by doing this. Firstly, the enemy has to extend far up the lane to get CS, opening them up to ganks. Secondly, you are immune to ganks since you're so close to the turret. And finally, you can deny the enemy of experience and gold and fight them off if they try and contest it. When the enemy is getting frozen, they'll either try to bust the freeze by going all in with minion advantage or roam to another lane. If they try to bust the freeze by going all in, having a jungle gank or counter gank ready will be devastating and can straight up win you the early game. In this example, freezing the lane allows us to get off an easy gank when Jinx tries to get into experience range, and subsequently nets us a free dragon. Keep in mind that if Jinx chose the alternative option and roamed to mid lane, we would use our wave clear to immediately push the minions back into the turret, force them to come back, and repeat the freezing process. If I had to pinpoint the single thing that high elo players do better in lane than the average gold player, it would be using lane control to get objectives on the map. What you do with your lane control can be the difference between win lane lose game and carrying your early game lead through to the mid game and an eventual win for your team. If you constantly apply the trade and push phase to your games, you will be able to attain lane control with relatively little resistance until mid platinum. At that point, practice and get a feel for the three lane control options and you'll find yourself climbing very rapidly. That's it for episode 3, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, peace out.